हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल साइकोटेक स्कोर 100 परसेंट आई हैव ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड अ वीडियो इन विच आई हैव मेंशन द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वाइवा क्वेश्चन फॉर रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट एंड डेजिटेशन फॉर एम ए एम एस सी पी एच डी एंड एम फिल इन साइकोलॉजी मैनी स्टूडेंट्स वर रिक्वेस्टिंग फॉर द आंसर्स ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू आंसर ऑल द क्वेश्चन विच आर जनरली आज इन द वाइवा ऑफ रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट एंड डेजिटेशन so let us start the video and discuss about first question our first question is what do you understand by operational definition so basically operational definition gives a precise meaning to the spoken or written word further you can say that uh, it defines how a term word or phrase is used when it is applied in a specific context this clearly implies that a word may have different meanings when used in different situations If you want to give more precise answer then you can mention that uh, operational definition is the specific way in which a variable is measured in a particular study the process of creating an operational definition is uh, known as operationalization our next question is what do you understand by hypothesis so a hypothesis is a precise testable statement of what the researcher predict will be the outcome of the study This usually involves uh, proposing a possible relationship between two variables and what are the two variables one variable will be independent variable and other will be dependent variable basically the independent variables are the variables which the researcher changes and the dependent variables are those variables what the researcher measures the next question is what do you understand by alternate and null hypothesis the alternative hypothesis states that there is a relationship between the two variables being studied in our research and the one variable has an effect on the other variable and the null hypothesis states that there is no relationship between the two variables being studied where one variable does not affect the other for example if we want to study the relationship between height and weight so in null hypothesis we can clearly state that there is no significant relationship between weight and height and in alternative hypothesis we will state that there will be significant relationship between weight and height the next question is in which method hypothesis emerged at later stage so in mixed and qualitative method hypothesis emerges at later stage next question is what is research design we can say that research design is the framework of research methods and techniques chosen by the researcher and the research design can be experimental survey correlational semi experimental review etc the next question is what are research methods so research methods are specific procedures for collecting and analyzing data and whenever we are conducting research so developing research methods becomes an integral part of the research design research methods can be qualitative or quantitative or mixed so if we talk about quantitative methods so quantitative methods examine numerical data and often requires the use of statistical tools to analyze data collected this also allows uh, for the measurement of variables and relationship between them can be established and quantitative data can be represented using graphs and tables whereas qualitative data is non numerical and focuses on establishing patterns rather than relationship and if we talk about the mixed methods so mixed methods are composed of both as the name suggests mixed so it composed of both the qualitative and quantitative research methods and uh, mixed methods allow for explanation of unexpected results the next question is uh, what is sample and what are the types of sample a sample can be defined as a smaller set of data that a researcher chooses from a larger population by using a predefined selection method and examining the sample provides insight that the researcher can apply to the entire population in types of samples there are uh, different types first one is convenient sample second is purposeful sample third is judgment sample fourth is random sample so we'll discuss about these types one by one so let us start with convenient sample so the convenient sample is the sample in which the research population is chosen out of convenience 
from a population for observation for example uh, recruiting patients with a particular illness from support groups next step is purposeful sample where a sample is collected from information rich cases for uh, in-depth study and the size and specific cases depend on the study purpose there are some subtypes of purposeful sampling like extreme and deviant case sampling intensity sampling homogeneous sampling typical case sampling sterified purposeful sampling snowball or chain sampling theory based sampling opportunistic sampling and convenient sampling so next type is judgment sample where the research population is obtained according to the discretion of someone who is familiar with the uh, research population's relevant characteristics last type of sample is a random sample in which a sample is chosen at random from the research population using a recognized method there are some subtypes of random samples which consist of simple random sample systematic random sample sterified sample or cluster sample the next question is explain the procedure of a study for answering this question you have to mention all the steps involved in a research so there are eight steps involved in research process first one is identifying the problem second is reviewing literatures third is setting research questions objectives and hypotheses fourth is choosing the study design fifth is deciding on the sample design sixth collecting data seventh step is processing and analyzing data and eighth and final step is writing the report so these are steps involved in uh, research process next question is what are all the principles of ethics which should be exercised in research so there are number of ethical principles that should be taken care when performing undergraduate or master levels dissertation research like uh, do good do not harm obtain informed consent from potential research participant minimize the risk of harm to participant protect their anonymity and confidentiality avoid using deceptive practices and uh, give participants the right to withdraw from your research at any point of time next question is what is review of literature what are all its purpose so basically a literature review establishes familiarity with the current research in a particular field or you can say uh, it establishes understanding of current research in a particular field before carrying out a new investigation and conducting a literature review help us to find out what research has already been done and uh, to identify what is unknown within our topic so that accordingly we can uh, decide our objectives and uh, move ahead for the research you can say that the purpose of a literature review is to provide foundation of knowledge on topic which you have uh, selected for your research to identify areas of prior scholarship to prevent duplication and give credit to other researchers you can also mention that uh, it helps you to identify inconsistencies like uh, gaps in research uh, conflicts in previous studies open questions left from other research to identify need for additional research to identify the relationship of works in context of its uh, contribution to the topic and other works and uh, it also helps you to place your own research within the context of existing literature making a case for why uh, further study is needed so till now i have discussed uh, answers of 10 questions i'll make part 2 of this video in which i'll discuss remaining questions so don't forget to watch part 2 of this video see you in the next video till then bye bye take care